Welcome to a Key Smash Studios tutorial. This is the beginning of a new series that's actually going to continue on from Unity's Rollaball tutorial. In this series, we're going to be adding functionality to the Rollaball tutorial, such as basic enemies, respawning the player when they run into an enemy or fall off the map, creating a lose state, adding split screen and a second player, importing assets, creating menus, and adding sounds. And to start off this series, today we'll be making those basic enemies. We're going to have them simply move between a list of points on the map. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. So this video is starting off where the Unity's Rollaball tutorial ended. I will link their tutorial in the description, so that way if you haven't completed that tutorial but would like to be at this start point, you can do so. But to go ahead and begin, we're going to create a new C Sharp script. So we're going to go to our project window, right click, go up to create, move over to C Sharp script, and then I'm going to name this enemy. Once it's created, we can go ahead and double click on the script and open it up. And the first thing we want to do is provide some variables for this script. So we're going to have two public variables. We'll be able to adjust these variables inside the inspector window in the engine. So our first one is going to be a public float, and this is going to be the speed of our enemy, and we'll default it to zero initially. And then our next is going to be the waypoints that our enemy will be going between. This is going to be a list of transforms, and we're going to call it waypoints. Again, this is public, so we'll be able to add to it inside the inspector window in the engine. We're going to be using these waypoints to provide directions for our enemies so that way they know the points on the map to travel to. Next, we're going to go ahead and create some private variables. These variables are only accessible inside this script. So the first one is going to be an int, and we're going to call it waypoint index. We're going to use this integer to keep track of which waypoint the enemy should currently be moving towards. And then our final variable is going to be a float, and this is going to be called range, and we'll use this to determine when the enemy is close enough to a waypoint to go ahead and move on to the next one. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and give some defaults to these two variables inside of our start function, which is called before the first frame update. So we're going to take our waypoint index and default it to zero. We want our enemy to go towards that first waypoint inside our list. And then we're going to take our range, and I'm going to set it to one. What we'll eventually use this for is to say when our enemy is within one unit of the current waypoint it's moving towards, go ahead and switch it to the next waypoint for it to move towards that one. And so now we'll create a new method where we can do that. We're going to name this function move and make it void. Void simply means it's not returning anything. You can name this function whatever you'd like. I'm simply naming it move because we're going to use this function to move our enemy, but if something makes more sense to you, you can name it anything you'd like here. So the first thing we want to do is take our transform. This is going to be the transform that this script is attached to. And then we're going to call Unity's built-in lookat function. This lookat function wants a transform as its argument, and then what this function will do is take that target transform, which we'll set to be a waypoint, and it will have the enemy face that waypoint at all times. So we're going to take our waypoints list, and we're going to pass in the waypoint index as the current waypoint that we'll be looking for. And now that our enemy is looking at this waypoint, we want to move our enemy forward towards it. So we're going to take the same transform. Again, this is the transform that the script is attached to. And then we're going to call Unity's translate function. And translate wants a vector that the object is going to move by. In our case, since our object is looking in the direction we want it to move, we can pass in the forward vector of our object. The way you get that forward vector is by doing vector 3forward and then we're going to multiply it by our speed. And then finally, we're going to multiply it by time dot delta time. And what this does is add for a smoother translation of our object. Time dot delta time is simply the amount of seconds that have passed since the previous updated frame. 
And now that we're looking at the waypoint we want to be moving towards and moving our enemy in that forward direction, we can go ahead and check to see how close our enemy is to the waypoint and if we need to move it on to the next waypoint. So the way we do that is by creating an if statement. And inside this if statement, we're going to use Unity's function of vector3.distance. And what distance does is it takes in two vectors and then returns a float value of how far vector A is from vector B. So our first vector is going to be our transform.position. This is the XYZ location of our enemy in Unity. And then we want to go ahead and get the transform position of our waypoint. So we're going to do waypoints, waypoint index, which is the current waypoint that we're moving towards. And then we want to get the position of that transform. And now what we want to do is see if the return value of the distance between those two is less than our range. So again, this if statement is simply saying, is the distance between my player and the waypoint less than one, which is what we defaulted our range value to. And if that is the case, we are as close to the waypoint as we wanna be before we move on to the next one. Then we take our waypoint index, we plus plus it, which is the equivalent of saying plus one to my waypoint index. And then after we've done that, we want to make sure that we're not out of range of our list of waypoints. And so the way we do that is by saying, is our waypoint index greater than or equal to our list of waypoints, which is waypoints dot count. And if that is the case, then that means we've gone out of range. And so what you want to do is take our waypoint index and set it back to zero. This will allow our character to iterate through all of the waypoints over and over again indefinitely. And now finally, you need to call this function. Right now, this function is never called, so this code will never execute, but update is called every frame, and we want our enemy to be moving every frame. So we'll go ahead and call our move function inside of that update function. And that is all of the code that is needed to move our enemy between specified points inside of our map. So make sure to save your script and then you can go ahead and go back to Unity. And after it compiles your script, what we're going to do is go over to our hierarchy, right click inside of this. We're going to create a 3D object and it will also be a sphere just like our player, but this is going to be an enemy. And then for our sphere, we wanna go ahead and add a rigid body. So you just click this add component button and type in rigid body. And then you can click on it and it will add it. And then we wanna add our enemy script so that way this object moves the way we intended an enemy to move. I'm gonna give it a speed of 10, just like the player does from the rollerball tutorial. And then for this, I'm going to give it two different waypoint elements. And we'll create those waypoint elements in our scene in just a minute. But first, what we want to do is go ahead and reset this transform so that way it goes to 0, 0, 0. And then what we're actually going to do is create a prefab of this enemy so that way we can have multiple in the scene. So just like you did with the pickup object from the rollerball tutorial, we'll click on the enemy inside of our hierarchy and we'll drag it down to our prefabs folder and then release. And now we have a prefab of this enemy that we can drag into the scene at any point. So we'll go ahead and delete this one from the scene. And we're going to create an empty object that we'll use to keep track of our waypoints. So we'll call this waypoint parent. And we wanna reset this transform to zero, zero, zero. And then I'm just going to create some more empties for waypoints. However, you can use objects here if you would like, so that way they're easier to see. And then I'm just going to reset this to zero, 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 and then move above my scene so that way I can more easily see it. And then grab this square so that way it only moves on the X and Z axis. And then I'm gonna move it over in this corner. And then I'm going to add it as a child to the parent, just so that way our hierarchy is more clean. And then I'm going to copy paste it and create a second waypoint and just drag it to the other end. Now I'm going to take my enemy and drag it into the middle, just between those two waypoints. And I'm gonna scroll back down to my enemy script and then click on the element zero and add my first waypoint. 
And then I'm going to do the same with my element one, but with the second waypoint. And the nice thing about having these be public is that if you drag in another enemy, you can adjust those to be different. So you could have slower enemies, faster enemies, you can have different waypoints for them to go between. So that way the paths aren't all the same for your different enemies, or you don't have to create a separate script for each enemy type that you have in the game. So now we can go ahead and save our scene, control S, and then click the play button at the top to test and play. And as you can see, our enemy is going between the two waypoints that we placed in the scene. And whenever he gets within one unit from those empty objects, it swings around and starts going the opposite direction. So as a recap, we created an enemy that has two adjustable variables inside of our inspector so that we can have different enemy types by simply adjusting that for each one. We made it a prefab so that way we could easily drag and drop it into the scene and don't have to go through the process of creating a new one each time. As always, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, be sure to leave them in the comments or you can join our Discord and ask them there. We make tutorials here every Wednesday and Saturday. We also release game content on Tuesdays and Thursdays, as well as stream on Twitch Tuesdays and Fridays. We have a game called Blast Off on the Google Play Store, and we have an asset pack of kids toys on the Unity Store. We also have a Patreon that has a YouTuber supporter tier, so if any of those things interest you or you would like to support us in any of those ways, I will link all those things in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.